Today on Sewing with Nancy, we continue with the mini-series of how to sew art, starting with a photo, choosing fabric, and then following steps to turn a common digital image into great wall art. Welcome back, Tammy Bowser, who is really an innovator in this industry, it will show us how to transform basic, ordinary batik fabric into fine art. Tammy, it's a treat to have you here. Nancy, during the first episode, we detailed how to use a digital image from your camera to create a pattern. In this second episode, the magic happens, cutting and adding the fabric, plus stitching the design. How to sew art, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest running sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman, is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 90 years. Pelon. Dedicated to providing sewing innovations in interfacings, battings, fusibles, home deck, and more. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During the first episode of How to Sew Art, Tammy and I showed how to create the pattern. And the pattern that we created is going to make a picture of her granddaddy. Now, we don't expect our viewers to do your granddaddy, of right? Of course not. <laughs> no. we, have, we have free a trial for them of my software they can download and do their own pictures. So you can put in your own picture. We're going to give you a review of how we got to where we are today. But before that, let's show you some other the great works of art she's cr that you've created. The trombone is one of my favorites. Yes, it is. It was actually the first one when I came up with this technique and it, that's when I knew I had something magical. And there are only, how many fabrics in that quilt? It has 12. 12 fabrics. It looks yeah. like 90, don't you think? But <laughs> it's, it's not. And then the trumpet is not a person. Most of your, your designs include people. This is an inanimate object and it's striking. Yes, and it, what I like about this one is that I had a lot of background space, which I usually don't have, so I start playing around with the stitching and texture. So that's really awesome. Now the bass player is, the name of that piece is Joyful. Yes, it's Joyful because you can see the joy in his face, and it's really awesome that, that you can capture that emotion in the fabric. It's amazing. So to work with any art design, with the batik fabrics, you're going to start with an image. And the granddaddy image was one of his press shots when he was an actor. Yes. And what a fun shot. <laughs> Whoop, let me get the glare off of there. But it's a big image. Yes, it is a big image. So we learn how to crop the image and just take the most important part, which is his, his face and mm -hmm. his shoulders, and make a nice portrait. So here you can see how it's been cropped. And this is what Tammy was talking about. You can, at howtosew.com, you can get the software to play around with, and then you adjust it to make a pattern. Yes, you adjust it by, first of all, you can crop to whatever portion of the picture you want, and you can decide how many fabrics you want to use. For this technique, we use somewhere between six and 12. And the left side of the software, there's a little knob that yeah, you can... Yeah, just a little slider that slider. lets you choose. And then, and then you also smooth those pixels out with the shape smoothing slider and that will take away all those little pieces and merge them into bigger pieces. It's really fascinating and then you hit print and for this instance there were nine eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper printed out and I'm just going to show you where this falls on the picture. It's in the upper left hand corner and I think you can kind of see how the hair continues and the background is there and all those little dots are numbers. They're in numbers one through six because you chose to have six fabrics, and you'll see that in a minute. Yes. And then you tie all this together. Yes, and you'll notice it says rows and columns. It has the little um, numbers for the rows and columns right on the top, and that's yeah. to help you put it in, in order, tape it back together the, the right okay. way. Doesn't it look fun? Like a cross stitch, <laughs> but it's gonna be a lot faster. And then, if you watch the first program at nancyzeman.com, uh, if you missed it, then you'll see how to create a parchment paper, fusible web, and parchment paper. And then, Tammy, you've kind of 
smooth, oh, excuse me, smoothed out some of the lines. Yes, we were able to determine, since we're gonna simplify that background, we found the edge of his hair and his shoulder so that we can make this one big piece and simplify and make it simple. Then the fabrics, um, Tammy has a great way of auditioning fabrics so that you get six fabrics, light to dark, and they aren't going to be all mediums and all lights, uh, they're going to be light to dark. And we audition and we use this value isolation tool and you can see clearly if the fabrics are lighter or darker by just comparing them when you... It's like going to the optometrist and saying, do you like A or B, <laughs> B or exactly. C? <laughs> exactly. So we're giving you the little condensed version of how we got to where we are right now, but this is where we ended up in our first episode. And so now we'll set up the table to start making the magic. In addition to printing out the tile pattern, the computer program will also print out this value chart of one through mm -hmm. six, light to dark. And you can see that Tammy has attached the six fabrics that coincide with the numbers. And then that's what's gonna work with the pattern. So I, you're gonna work with fabric number five. Right, I'm I gonna am. work with fabric number one. And first of all, let Tammy show you how this works. This is quite phenomenal. <laughs> yes, we remember we um, from the first episode I showed you how to put together this sandwich of a fusible web and it starts with a layer of parchment paper and then we have a layer of fusible web that has been sprayed with basting spray so it's, it's sticky and that's mm -hmm. important because it holds the fabric in place and we'll never cut, cut this. And then there's the pattern underneath and you can see right through the parchment paper and right through the web to see the pattern right through it. So you're going to start start from the outer edge and trace a piece yes, you of round your... Yes, you start from the edge and I'm using a, a red pen so that you can see what I'm doing. So you just trace the first piece. And this is fabric number five. five. Okay. And then you peel the paper back. Remember you never ever cut this web because it's what's going to hold all the pieces together. So I'm cutting it. I'm pulling back the paper. It'll be easier to do when you're not doing it upside down, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. But it's it's easy to do. Let me move over here a little bit. And you don't have to be super exact. I mean, you follow the numbers, but if you go off the line a little bit, and I'll do it up this way so I can see. Just, just, just cut it off and it'll be fine. I bet if we tilted it this way. Yeah, mm -hmm. looking at it upside backwards too works. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, perfect. And since this piece is a little bit big, I put it on, this is fabric number five, and you can see that it's fabric number five there. I use a couple of straight pins to pin, pin it right to the paper because this paper becomes my pattern piece. So I'm just putting a few pins so that it doesn't move. And this becomes really important when you have a piece that's, this one is a pretty easy shape, sure, kind of a rectangle, but if it's like a really weird shape, you just put more pins to keep it from moving yeah, around. Yeah, so you can get the curves and the contours yeah. that are yeah, there. Yeah, it's a really strange shape. You want to make sure you maintain that shape. Then you just cut around the edge, leaving an eighth or a sixteenth, just slightly bigger. Again, you don't have to stress out or be too worried about getting it wrong. There's almost no way to get it wrong. We've done all the prep already, so um, it's, it's pretty guaranteed to be sure. right. Sure. And, you know, Tammy's a really laid-back person, <laughs> and she takes it one step at a time, and I saw this whole thing, I thought, I'm going to get it all done. Well, you just take it a little bit at a time, and it really, you can accomplish a lot. And after she gets this cut out, then it will stick to the tacky part of the fusible web. And we're almost there. But there's one big chunk of fabric that's, that's yeah, there done. There we go. There we go. So that's the piece. And we take the pins out. And, and you have right sides up. Yep, right side up. You don't have to 
remember to do some turning something upside down and then the paper becomes trash and then you put the fabric right in that spot and you know exactly where it goes because yeah and it sticks it sticks now I have this opposite corner I've started to I traced out one section of they were almost all number ones this is of, of his collar and so then I can place that right here. And you're, you're not having it exacting, an eighth, a sixteenth of an inch or whatever. We can lift this up a little bit to get it on the webbing. But you can see ah, how that positions into place. Yeah. Then you could do a big section of his sh shirt collar over here and just keep cutting and marking. Let's go to the other one. I'll we, show them how to cut a small piece. Because, you know, you might guess we have a sample yeah, of, of this. Yeah, of course. We, yeah. yes. we kept going. Didn't want to make you wait. So, can you see how the magic is happening piece by piece by piece? And But when you get into the face, you keep a lot of the detail. You don't make big collars or whatever. Yeah, you don't. You keep all the detail. And another thing, if there's a bunch of little pieces that are the same number and they're lined up next to each other, you can group them together, make it one bigger piece. Let me see if I can show you. See right here, it might look like there's... Um, bunch of little pieces but really it's one big piece. So you just make that one piece cut it out and here's a number five that has been cut out and you'd stick it on the fabric as Tammy's going to do and there you really don't even have to. It's small so you could just hold it with your finger you know with the big one I wanted to show you how to do a big one and use the pins or if it's small like this one you could just hold it with your fingers. Okay. And I'm just cutting it slightly bigger. And work on it a little bit at a time. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. Nope. It's just something you do while you're relaxing. If you're normally a little high strung and stress yourself out, this is the time when you learn to take it easy and relax and follow the plan. And just add piece by piece. I hope you can see how the process is done on this quilt. And the next thing we do after filling in all the images is to do the stitching. After all the pieces have been positioned on the fusible web, it's time to separate the fusible web from the paper backing. Now, I know we didn't get this all completed, but I know Tammy will finish that after the taping of the program. Uh, but here you can see that we can just peel away the paper backing, or excuse me, the web from the paper pattern. And then, Tammy, on the design that you're going to do the stitching, you've already backed it with batting and backing fabric. Yes, after peeling off that pattern off the back, I just put the whole webbing and fabric that's attached right on top of the batting and iron it down. It fuses it in place so it doesn't move. Now the stitching is going to be free motion stitching, so we're going to lower the feed dogs, drop them or cover them depending upon your machine, place a quilting, a free motion foot on your machine, and then choose threads. And these are variegated threads, much like the batik fabrics we worked with choose variegated threads in light, medium, and dark. And do a little auditioning before you do the stitching. Let me peel this back to show you. In this corner, we have a medium color. And just unwind some of the threads, lay it on the fabric to see if it blends. You don't want to change the value of the fabric. You just want to enhance it. So use the variegated thread. Cotton works really well for this instance. And then you're going to let some of the magic happen to liven up the fabric that hasn't been stitched. Okay. So when you start stitching, um, I have a medium here, so I'm going to stitch on this medium fabric. And I'll pick an area and just surround it. That's how in the quilt of the granddaughters you could see the girl's face in the back because I followed the shapes. And so that made the, the picture show up in the thread too. So I'll, for, I'll start off by encircling the outside, and then I kind of scribble or do some sort of repeating shape on the inside of that outlined area. I also like doing like little, little circles, too, and I'll show you that in just a second. Mm -hmm. And after you keep each section, you might even do a different design. And at the end, it looks like you did a whole lot of fancy things, but really, it, it, it feels like you're doodling. There's nothing wrong with doodling. No, I like doodling myself. So 
So I did that whole little section just that quick. So uh, my suggestion, if you're like nervous about free motion, just practice for a little while and get comfortable with your machine. Make yourself comfortable and just kind of whatever you do, just do a lot of it. You know, if you have <laughs> a, a little crooked line and you just have one crooked line, it's just gonna look like crooked line. But if you have a hundred of them, it's gonna look like you're a genius. <laughs> and that you are. <laughs> now, Tammy mentioned the granddaughter's art quilt. Well, here you can see it again. The image of Avery and Luella, cute little girls, of course. And then I'd like to show you how she followed when doing the stitching the image itself. Now, here's a close-up. And th these always look much, you get the whole image further away. But as you get closer up, you can see the detail, how she stippled around the edges and then use different colors of thread. And then as we turn to the wrong side, you can see the face come alive again. So not only do you have an image on the right side, but you have an image on the wrong side. So you can see you just follow the fabric that has been cut out. Now if we look at um, the image of Duke Ellington, this is a really pretty amazing scene. And there it is on the right side. And then, Tammy, you did some changes with the bobbin thread. Yes, I changed the bobbin thread with the top thread. And I was surprised to turn it over and figure out that the picture showed up in the thread <laughs> on the back. And Not covered. that you're going to see this, but this is just kind of a, a surprise yes. to surprise image. It's sort of a little special surprise. But there's more than just stippling that you have embellished with your quilts. Yes, yeah, sometimes I like to add a little bit of sparkle. And, and here's some uh, metallic uh, fibers. Yeah, some metallic fibers. They're really beautiful and come in lots of colors. And I picked this nice dark one to go with the flower. And the way I use it is to just break off a little bit and just sprinkle it wherever I want the sparkle, so I'll do that. And then I just do the free motion right on top and let the stitching catch it. So I'm gonna do some little spirals. And it just, it just the stitching just holds it down. And, and here's the an image, the finished image of B.B. King. One of the, your uncle was a professional photographer and did this image. And here I have, uh, the image or the actual quilt and you can see that the metallic fibers have been added in this area. You can just see this, just a little glitz, a touch of sparkle and it adds such interest to this area. But you, you have to have a little concern about that when pressing, correct? Yes, it, it kind of melts so you don't iron on it. That's the very, very last step just before you do the binding and it adds a lot of interest and brings focus to if you want something to have be the center of attention. Sure, so. of course. Now speaking of binding, you have about the simplest binding technique I have ever seen. Yes. And it's okay to not to bind. Yeah. To bind or not to bind. Here. Who needs all those rules? You could just <laughs> not bind it. <laughs> so on, on the granddaughter's quilt, the edges have just been cut and stitched. You could secure stitch around the edge, but that's it. And then you could add a sleeve to the back so it could be hung in a very traditional way. So that's one way of really not finishing it, but this is a raw edge applique. It's okay to do this very, un very yeah. untraditional. And then on the Duke Ellington quilt, you just stitched a binding to the fabric and brought it to the wrong side and hand stitched it into place so that you do not have a traditional binding like we put on a cut a strip two and a half inches and you do all fancy stitching. This just brings it to the back, stitch it, and wow, that's it. It makes it, it, makes it clean, look like a painting with no with no um, edge at all. Well, Timmy, I want to thank you for your inspiration. I am going to create one of these. I, I, you gave me the ways of doing it, and I know our audience will be encouraged to do it too. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. I'm pleased to have taught, been able to teach you today. And you too can make art 
with all these step-by-steps and enjoy the process. When you think of sewing and quilting, I'm sure some of the first thoughts, of course, are fabric, needle, and thread that come to mind. Well, how about adding the noun song? With me today is a folk artist, performer, songwriter, Lil Rev, who has a special song in his heart for those of us who sew and quilt. Welcome back to Sewing with Thank Nancy, you. Rev. Yeah, it's good to be back. You know, we got great comments the last time you were on, and it was fun being serenaded. So. Here you are, back again to sing Thank some you. more of your historical songs that include quilting. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out with uh, one called The Quilter Shanty. And mm -hmm. uh, if you can imagine, oh, about 100 ladies at a quilting guild singing along, your viewers <laughs> can, can, can join us. And, and their, their part will be to say these hands are made for quilting. Okay, you sing with me so I'm not the only one. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, hand me down my needle and thread. These hands are made for quilting. I got crazy patterns in my head. These hands are made for quilting. This string of cloth just makes me sing. These hands are made for quilting. Leftover scraps are a precious thing. These hands are made for quilting. Take 25 yards of a muslin cloth. These hands are made for quilting. Cost so much more than I've got. <laughs> These, These hands are made for quilting. Way back in 1933. These hands are made for quilting. Squares and strips were all you'd see. These hands are made for quilting. So tell your friends to think of me. These hands are made for quilting. Before they toss those old blue jeans. <laughs> These hands are made for quilting. Well, Rev, this is fun to be sing along, and this is the end of, end of our 33rd season on Sewing with Nancy, and I've never sung on Sewing with Nancy before, so what a great way to end the, the season. <laughs> so you have another song with your acoustic guitar. That's right. I'm going uh, to do one called uh, They'll Reap What You Sow, S-E-W. Okay, got and, it. And uh, it goes a little something like this. Bees outside were buzzing like a needle turning thread. The sweet caress of fiddles dance inside my head. The acres stood there stoic like a patchwork quilt so fine. The harvest brought a rainbow, twas a crazy quilt design. Plant your seeds on the ground or you could hang them on the wall. Pass it on and they'll grow up strong, build things that won't fall. When we go out reaping these seeds we have sown, don't think it just tomorrow, for tomorrow it's come and gone. Don't think it just tomorrow, for tomorrow it's but a song. Well, Nancy, uh, if anything, this song should also be dedicated to you <laughs> for all the years you've inspired us and had the wow. long vision. Well, you're sweet. That makes me feel special. And you give presentations to gills around the country, and it's quite exciting. Tell, tell our viewers the name of your, sure. of your song and dance routine. So, uh, <laughs> so songs like, like this one... Uh, mm -hmm. um, you're not it's dancing, I know. I'm not dancing this time. <laughs> not this time. Okay. Uh, the show is called Scraps of Quilting Music, and uh -huh. uh, it's a one-man show of uh, history, song, lore, humor, and poetry on half a dozen instruments or so, and mostly for museums, quilting guilds, and performing arts centers. And what a great way, I mean, to put our craft and art and to combine your historical view with music. I, I really enjoy hearing you and being part of your... Thank you. Sing along. Sing, Thank al you. sing along with Nancy. <laughs> well, thanks again, Mark. And as we take out the show, why don't you strum a little along? You got us. Okay. Well, if you've enjoyed this program of Sewing with Nancy, you can watch more online 
at nancyzeman.com where you can watch the first episode and the second episode and a whole bunch of other episodes of Sewing with Nancy, the How to Sew artwork with Tammy. And also if you click on Nancy's Corner, you can connect with Rev and all of our other Nancy's Corner guests. So. Thanks for joining us on Sewing with Nancy. Thank you, Rev, Thank for being you. with us. And as I end all of my programs, bye for now. Tammy Bowser has written the book How to Sew Art, which is the reference for this two-part series. The book includes core concepts for making sewing art easy using the contoured pixel technique. Each book comes with a free online video course to guide you. It's $21.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com 2825. Order item BK2825. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Pellon, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Riley Blake Designs. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.